I have got a PhD in life. I'm spending my whole weekend in my pajamas and I'm not doing shit. You don't pay my bills or suck my dick. So like, what do I care what some random person on the internet thinks of me? And new year, new me, you gotta have some fun. God, Tim, everything you touch just like is amazing. And I want to tell that person, no the fuck it's not. I'm only trying to make one fucking person happy and that's Tim Castleman. What up, everybody? It's Tim Castle, and welcome to another episode of Tim Talks. This one with notes. I've heard the complaints, mostly from the listeners and my people. They're like, man, a couple of these episodes, you're all over the fucking place. And I'm like, like, what happened? I'm like, I got high as fuck. And they're like, what? I'm like, yeah, I got high as fuck. And, you know, if you've ever hung around someone that likes to smoke weed, they don't exactly, they aren't exactly known for their prowess for, for uh, succinct storytelling. Okay, it's usually a long rambling thing. And the only reason we listen to them is because they normally have the weed that, you know, I've literally stopped stories. I'm like, hey, man, are we going to smoke this joint that you've been holding for 30 minutes? Because that's the only reason I'm here. I don't give a shit about whatever it is you're talking about that I've been um, Charlie Browning my ears. Like, I I don't even know what you're saying right now. You could be plotting, plotting my own assassination right in front of me. I'd be too dumb to even hear you because all I'm doing is looking at the cannabis Contained in those fingertips, and I'm wondering, are we ever going to get a chance to smoke that motherfucker? And then my mom's like, calm down. One more story about banana. No, no, kidding. Kidding. Kidding, mom. Love you. CBD. If you ever see any videos or hear anything about me smoking, you think it's all CBD. It's legal. Uh, it's for uh, my mental health and uh, to give me positivity and energy. And speaking of that, you know what? I'm so enthralled with CBD right now. I'm going to open the curtains. What? I'm going to do like they do in The Godfather 2 and be like, why, why are the co- curtains open? Well, mine is to see the sun. I just want to make sure it's uh, another hot day in Texas. just want to see from the inside that the outside is still currently melting. Yep, sure is. Fantastic. Where was I? This is with notes, by the way. Uh, yes, I have notes. And before I begin this episode, uh, I, I just want to uh, – I have a, an embarrassing admission uh, to make to you. And that is that uh, I feel real fucking stupid sharing some of this stuff with you guys because to a lot of you, I would hope when I share with what I'm going to share with, you know, today and, you know, as I continue to uh, evolve as a human being and working on my mental and physical, not really, my mental health and my business health and, and relationships and all, health, 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 right? A lot of this is probably common sense to 99.9% of you. Unfortunately, it's not common sense or wasn't, it isn't common sense. It wasn't common sense to me. So I feel real ashamed and embarrassed about admitting uh, and and sharing my struggles with you because, again, some of the stuff you're going to hear me share, you know, over the course of our time together, some of you are going to just be like, what the fuck? Of course water is wet and the sky is blue, Tim. Um, so, you know, if you hear me saying something like that and you think that good, good for you, but you know, your journey is your journey. My journey's my journey. Everyone has their own unique, valuable snowflake journey in which we as a society try to do the best we can with the tools that we have, which is the saying that my therapist has been saying forever. And I fucking hated it, hated it for years. Years before I was like, you know what? I think we might just be doing uh, the best we have with the tools we got. Right? I also want to be clear. I resisted a lot of the shit I see now for years, damn near decades of warning signs. And I'm just like, oh, that, that's an abnor- abnormality. That's a little outlier. It's a little blip on the radar. You know, everything's going great. What are you talking about? My life would be a dumpster fire. And I'm like, what are y'all talking about? I got, I got. The curtain's open right now. I got me a fresh Diet Coke. Coke Zero. I don't even want to say Diet Coke. I'm a Coke Zero whore, right? Got me some of the stickiest of the ickiest. I'm good. Now other people would be like, well, man, I think this might be a problem. And I'm like, well, it's a, I mean, that's a you problem, not a me problem. Because there was a time in my life, you know, before 2017, where I apparently thought that my life was perfection. Mwah, magnifique. Like the Mona Lisa behind 
museum glass, armed guard, not to be disrupted, a national treasure. Look at me, look at me, look at me. And it turns out I might have just been wrong. And in fact, maybe I was the asshole in the equation. I got notes, people. And by that, I may have one four by six card. I've written this stuff out. Because if I overthink, then I don't hit record. If I don't hit record, then we don't have a podcast to go out. We don't have a podcast to go out. More people live that week that we don't release a podcast than when we do. So we're trying to do our part to slow global warming and our planet being overcrowded by releasing these podcasts as often as possible with some of the most depressing topics as possible so that some of you will just swerve right next time you're driving alone Alone, don't take anybody else out in your master plan, quote unquote. I got the perfect idea. I'll just run head first into a tree. That doesn't sound good. What seems interesting is getting a bottle, a bottle of helium, connecting a hose to it, because apparently putting a bag over your head, tying that with, uh, I have too much time on the internet, right? Tying that with some duct tape so you can't get it off, because apparently, like the Joker, you die with a smile on your face, which, I mean, isn't that what we're all after at the end of it? Like, what killed him? Helium? What happened? I don't know. He's fucking smiling, though. Well, must have died a happy man. Must have killed himself because he was so happy, right? Back to me being the asshole. My, my first line literally is this. I feel fucking stupid because uh, I lack, and I lacked, good communication role models as a kid, Right? And a lot of this shit should be second nature. And believe it or not, like this only popped up recently. I'm talking about despite years of therapy, medication, looking inward. The other day I was just like, oh, wait, hold on. You know, my parents didn't exactly have the best relationship together. They certainly didn't have a great relationship once apart. I never really saw a good communication model. See, my dad got got mad. He just got angry and spanked me, right? My parents got mad. It was more of a mental, when my mom, you know, got mad, it was more of a mental thing. Like, do these sentences instead of spank. You know, I just, I just didn't have a good role model. And I thought I did. And I thought it was natural and normal because that's what was natural and normal to me. Like, I can remember a few instances where my parents peacefully coexisted. You know, they gave each other a funny, um, Christmas card now and then. But then I can also remember being a pawn in the game between them two during the divorce and also having to witness some pretty horrific physical abuse from my father uh, to my mom. In person, heard about secondhand, witnessed firsthand, you know, happened to me, uh, several CPS visits. You know, it just, like, when you start looking at it, you just go, oh, maybe, huh, you know, maybe that... uh, golden childhood of mine that I thought was so awesome and amazing maybe wasn't so awesome and amazing. And now I have the pleasure of unlearning a lot of that shit. I wish I could have done it before it cost me two marriages and a great girlfriend. I wish I could say that learning it's going to fix everything in the future. It's not. It just is going to make me more aware. Right? And, And I've said this before and I'll say it again. My fucking podcast, I'll say what I want. Mm -mm -mm. Ignorance truly is bliss. Because here's the thing. It's not my fault that I learned an improper communication strategy, that I learned either a mental way to, to deal with it or a physical way or just, you know, bully and be abrasive. I mean, just, I just, I shudder at the old way of thinking. But that's why ignorance is bliss, because you don't know no better. It was great with my head in the sand being like, what are you talking? Everything's going great. Yeah, we're working on these things. Yeah, yeah, we got these little leaks in the boat. And then, you know, 2017 happens, and we start becoming the fucking Titanic, and it's like, oh, shit, we're taking on, oh, shit, you know? Um, Now I'm just trying to keep this bitch from sinking all the way to the bottom. So let me give you an example that I'm fucking embarrassed about today. And this is, let let, let me finish thought one. Then we go to thought two, Tim. See how that works? You finish thought one. Then you go to thought two. Thought one, okay? Ignorance is bliss. It's not my fault that I learned the communication uh, strategies and tactics that I did for my parents that are very not communicative, very unhealthy, very unhappy, all those things. But the second you learn about that stuff, 
and you know there needs to be a change, although not your fault, it now becomes your responsibility to fix. Okay, so once I put a mirror up to my face, if I don't fucking like what I'm seeing, it's up to that same dude in the mirror to fucking fix it. That's the hard part for people. We like the, oh, it's not your fault, you know, bad parents and all that stuff. Spoiler alert, your parents were trying to do the best they could with the tools that they had as well, just like you are. I still think my parents have it all fucking figured out, even though I know that they don't. Because they're just human beings like all of us who make mistakes. So that's what sucks about ignorance is that once it's no longer bliss because you know about it, well, then you got to fucking change it. And that's what I'm doing. That's what I'm working on. So I don't talk about it very much, but I'll talk about it a little bit here because for context, I was married one time before I had my heart ripped out uh, to the woman that I would call my high school sweetheart. It just was a terrible relationship. Uh, oil and water, black versus white. It just it was bad, 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 bad. We, we should never have gotten married. Uh, it had a lot to do with me thinking that's, you know, again, how I was raised. You meet a girl, you fall in love, you get engaged, you get married. We're trying to get to the end of this shit, the, you know, finish line thinking, so let's do it as quickly as possible, please. Sure, my family doesn't like her. Sure, her family doesn't really like my family. Sure, all my friends and confidants in the military are telling me this is a bad mistake. But they don't know me. I'm 18-year-old Tim Castleman, 19-year-old problem. Maybe, fuck, I may even have been 20, motherfuckers. I may have been the ripe age of 20 and had all that shit figured out. I know exactly what I want to do. Okay, dogs don't need to be barking. Must be getting an Amazon delivery. Excuse me while I put my animals down real quick. Nope, turns out they just want to randomly bark and fuck up my train of thought. No, they're good. If I have a dog sitter and a dog cam, don't worry. I'm not putting my dogs down anytime soon. But I decided to get married despite all of that. And because we were just oil and water, we fought all the time. All the time. And because I had terrible communication uh, habits and skills, that shit continued with me uh, in that relationship. Uh, And I look back now and I just go, you fucking idiot. You know, like we would get in patterns. Like she learned if I said no, if she just kept, what I would say harping on it over and over and over again, I'd eventually be like, man, not proud of this. This is, you know, this is the Monday morning quarterback. I'm like, hey, if you would just shut the fuck up, we'll do it. Just shut the fuck up. And I remember we tried to do therapy there. And I guess I was, you know, the thing I hate is that I'm judging the past me with today's eyes. This is like metaphor city. Like, you know what I mean? Like uh, uh, the shit you thought at eight, it's different than 18, 28, 30, if wherever you are in the life spectrum, right? And you look at your thoughts now and you go, oh, you fucking idiot. Of course Santa isn't. And of course the tooth fairy isn't. And of course, you know, whatever it may be. And you feel like embarrassment and shame today for the thoughts and actions of the past instead of understanding like, okay, in that moment, in those actions, in that past, I was just doing the best I could. It was terrible. Yeah, hindsight being 2020, what I'm about to tell you is fucking terrible. I mean, what I told you was fucking terrible. You know, anytime you respond to a loved one and you're like, if you'll just shut the fuck up, right? That's not helping. And if that's like your go-to response for shit, I just, you're fucking terrible, man. It was just terrible. Just fucking terrible. I was a terrible communicator. I did not... um, learn how to communicate effectively enough to save that relationship, although the relationship needed to go anyway. I understand now as a 42-year-old man what people told me when I was in my 20s and ignored, which is don't get married so young, young man. It's like now, you know, I see these moms, no, no shame if this is you, you know, but I see moms that have a kid at 18 and I'm just like, what are you doing? Like you have your whole life ahead of you. What the, why'd you fuck it up like that? In terms of like, you're going to college, maybe not. You're going to travel, like it's, sure, you can be the outlier. You can be the um, Aaron Brockovich. You know, you can, you can be that person. Sure, one person will be that. There'll also be 999 million people that try and aren't that. But we all always want to put ourselves in the hero role instead of the supporting cast role. And that shit just transferred to all areas of my life. Friendships, relationships, you know. And the problem was when we broke up, me and my my first wife, um, you know, everybody cheered me on. 
dude, I'm so glad you're not with her anymore. Everyone came back into my life. It just seemed like everything was fine because they all hated her as much as I grew to hate her, as much as she grew to hate me. So I was still at the ignorance is bliss part. I was just like, well, we broke up. It just must be because we were young lovers, not because we had horrible communication strategies, you know. And I left that relationship and thought, well, don't really have much to work on here. Definitely shouldn't take too long of a break. Should uh, be in therapy, blah, 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 blah. No, I get right back out on the dating scene just a few months after having my heart broken. Foolish, fucking stupid. Again, if I had a uh, eraser, I, I would have gone back, stayed single for much longer, worked on my shit. Um, but there becomes the butterfly effect. Because if I do that, then I don't meet wife number two, who is an amazing uh, woman. Look at me complimenting her. And someone that I, I brought all that baggage from the first marriage and all that hate and anger and, you know, and she was so deprived of love and, and self-worth that she was like, I'll just take anyone that has interest in me, even if this guy is a terrible communicator and, a, a you know, has a bad uh, attitude and a negative attitude and, you know, doesn't want to do any, you know, we have nothing in common basically, but we'll make it match. And dude, I think back to that marriage and I think back to that love and it's like, man, I would give anything for that again. Not with that person, because that's dead and gone, right? When you have fucking copy and paste, no contact orders, it's like, okay, cool. Yeah, well, guess I'll be reading about your death in the newspaper, right? Um, but just that love, man, because I felt like I was enough then. The problem was that the, the way I felt like I was enough was by helping uh, someone out, you know, not flaunt wealth or anything like that, but it's like, I'll put a gas tank, or take a gas in a, a gas a tank, a tank of gas in your vehicle. Sure, I can do that. You know, I can take you on your plane ride. You know, just a, a lifetime of first together that made that so special and makes me realize now what I truly had back then. And man, I fucking miss it. I, I may have mentioned this on the podcast. You know, I've, I've been. Divorced, it wasn't my choice, but uh, since 2017, and I don't think there's not a day, certainly not two days, that go by where I'm not audibly apologizing to my ex-wife or something. Of course, never to her, just out, you know. I think I even woke up this morning and apologized to her and my ex-girlfriend. It's just, it's a weird uh, self I don't know, flagellate. You know, it's just like a, a, it's, I don't know, like a kick in the teeth. It's not even a kick in the teeth. It's just like a daily, like, you ever saw, I almost said the Thomas Crown Affair. That's not it. The Da Vinci Code, where the suspect is, you know, whipping himself on the back. The, the movie's been out for 30 years, I think. If it's a spoiler alert, it sucks to be you. But he's like whipping himself on the back. Well, that's kind of what I feel like I get up in the morning and do. Whack, whack. And it's because I have a lot of embarrassment and a lot of shame uh, behind the way that I acted. Nothing illegal, nothing immoral, just, you know, a real fucking shithead who thought, oh, man, yeah, I have these deficiencies here, but I'm so good in, in this other area, it should make up for that, right? It's kind of like the ice cube tray. Well, this one ice cube tray is overflowing. It should just fill into the other buckets, right? Spoiler alert. It does not. Also, spoiler alert, when you pull a beer haired out in the middle of a conversation, that shit still hurts. Got the root on that motherfucker. Woo. Oh, I think that one went to the DNA. Make my nose itch. So, yeah, man. I just, I fucked up. And I fucked up even more by not getting therapy. I was just doing the best I could, though. But I, I should have got some therapy. I should have, I should have recognized those warning signs then I didn't, so I went on to repeat them. I don't think it's severe. Uh, in the past, a relationship with the, with my ex-wife number two. And lo and behold, that worked so well that in 2017, I got treated to an empty house and a Dear John letter. I'm up out of here. And I hate that because, dude, I look at people I know or, you know, that you follow on Facebook and it's like, yeah, he cheated six times, but we're still together. Yeah, you know, like, you know, 
Yeah, he, he went off his medication and threatened to kill me and shaved my head and abandoned me and tattooed a penis on our child's forehead. But I love him and we're back together. But with us, it was like, we out of here. And then it was like, yeah, well, no, we're just out of here. There's no reconciliation. There's nobody coming to save this marriage. It was like we were headed towards the the rocks and uh, I thought the captain was going to steer the boat away. I thought someone else was going to steer the boat away and we just ran right fucking into the rocks. And that's a little about me. Um, yeah, so that, I mean, at that point I had I had no choice. I had to stop and go, okay, well, this is weird. I've, I've lost wife number two for similar reasons to wife number one. Unlike wife number one, everybody is devastated that wife number two is out of my life. I'm devastated still to this day at, at points that she's out of my life. Maybe, just maybe, it's me. And that's when I had to start taking a, a deep, look inward and onward and making, you know, I, I had to look inside and say, all right, man, well, fuck, let's, let's start looking at this stuff. And that's what a therapist does. And I'm not here to do that with you. Right. I'm, uh, go to therapy. That's my recommendation to you. I would love each and every one of you, if you feel necessary, and maybe even if you don't to spend the money at least one time to sit down with a therapist and go like, Hey, any, any red flags we might need to address? Because if you don't address them, unfortunately, they're going to just keep repeating, whether you want them to or not. It's like the groove on a vinyl record. Or, you know, you drive some old roads back in the back in the old days, back when gas used to be under six dollars a gallon. Mm -hmm. You'd be driving one of them country roads, and uh, it'd be pretty rutted in by all them big trucks. Mm -hmm. Then you'd be driving it, and it seemed like your vehicles were just locked in wheels were and you couldn't get out of it and if you did it felt all weird as shit mm -hmm. better now it's probably if you use one of those uh, drive through car washes where you gotta put your car in neutral and then the, the track takes it and it keeps driving along whether you want to or not motherfucker once that track grabs you you're going well some of you have, are on that track you keep going around and around and around and around and you keep wondering what's happening, you don't realize that you're still doing the same lap and the same track and the same shit. And when it goes from being unconscious to conscious is when you got to step up and go, I need to address this. There was a mirror put in front of my face. There is no denying that there are some issues here. And now we have to work hard to address those issues. And that's what therapy is. A fun experience where you get to sit down and probe, 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 probe until there's some emotion. Then we, you know, much like a knot in the shoulder. And you're like, ooh, that's a little sensitive. And they're like, what? When I touch right here, and you're like, ah. And they're like, all right, I'm going to put my elbow into it. You're like, no, 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 it's really, really sore. And they're like, I know. But the only way we get this bitch out is by me putting my elbow into this little knot. And then we got to work it out, okay? And you're like, I don't know. And they're like, ah, you're right. And then hopefully that knot wears itself out. Not like you can't get bind it up again. Not like you may not sleep wrong and fuck it up, but you know, it's not a permanent fix. And the hardest part for me is having mercy and grace towards myself because I want to continuously beat myself up for past mistakes instead of just learning from them. And I think some of that's like, oh, man, if I could just get back in that game, now I know how to fix, you know, I know how to win it. I know how to get to that finish line again, and I could fix things with my ex. I, first of all, there's, that's just not possible. That's just not realistic, so it's not true. And two, once, once that got solved, other shit would pop, pop. Not that that doesn't happen in other relationships, but I just think together we were just, we're two totally different people. And despite the fact that she took everything, including my last name, with her, I, I got to go at it alone. And even five years later, that shit makes me emotional. Because I think it's like acceptance. It's like, oh man, I just have to accept I lost that one. 
I don't have real great role models for bouncing back from adversity. When my dad lost his job, when I remember in the 80s, he sat on the couch. And I felt did nothing or very little until he lost everything and had to move back in with his parents. I find myself in a similar crisis where instead of my job, I've lost all my will to live. Not all my will to live, but like, you know, like, I don't have good coping skills. Like, you just, yeah, just, it's a real vulnerable time because it's like, well, I don't, it's a, and it's a lot of lack, 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 lack. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't. So the way to fix that, according to those in the know, is one, to look at everything that, that I've accomplished, that I am a totally different person than I was even two years ago, that despite being, that despite the fact that I broke up with my ex-girlfriend, that, uh, I don't know, it haunts me. Like, it doesn't haunt me. I just feel like it was a bad decision to break up with her. Even though there were plenty of great reasons for doing so, and even though I needed to do so, I don't know. I think a lot of it has stemmed in, in relationships like this. Whether it's my ex-girlfriend, whether it's friendships, whether it's well, whatever. When I think of it, it's just like, oh, man. If they love me, if they accept me, if they take me in, if they give me a place to feel like where I belong, like I'll accept the situation. Sure, it may not be best for me, but man, if I could just be part of this group, that'd be so amazing. That'd be so awesome. And it'd be worth giving up my happiness for it. I broke up with my ex-girlfriend because she wanted me to stop shooting shows so much and you know be an adult and grow up go back to having a big boy job a lot of other shit that I don't want to get into but I fucked that all up man so she gets a daily apology too and the hardest thing is to look at those things and uh, forgive or accept them for what they what they are. You know, it's hard for me to forgive myself and say, oh, Tim, listen, man. You had a terrible childhood, you know, and this and that and this and that and this and that. And look how far you've come despite all of that. And then once you've heated this morning, right, once you finally, you know, once the second hurricane came and blew everything away, you were like, hey, maybe this time I won't build in a flood zone or a hurricane zone. You know, and when I broke up with my girlfriend and I was like, hey, man, okay, this is what I need to do and focus on me. And, and again, he, you know, it's like, man, I feel great about what I've been able to do and accomplish and the growth and all that shit. But I got no one to share it with. I can't fucking buy a date right now. And that's more, you know, one, it's like, you know, the older you get, the least selection that you, you know, have of available candidates. It's like, something must be wrong with us if, you know, I'm 42 and not married. That's one thing. And then thing number two is, um, my oh shit, I don't remember what thing number two was. Yeah, I just, I, I just, how I feel about myself, I think is the thing number two. It's like, man, I'm short, I'm fat, I got no business. I'm a terrible, you know. It's like, I want to show up with a, a list of all my negatives to try and push you away so that I don't get hurt, but also because I'm trying to connect on a deep, beyond surface level with somebody. Because to me, I feel like that's where the real connection is. So, I don't know. I think, I don't know, it's just like a, there's another way for saying, um, so what I believe I'm supposed to do is have some mercy and grace. And they always say, and this is always the one that gets me choked up like a little girl, is, uh, you know, your inner child. It's like, I'm supposed to look at my inner child, you know, and imagine me as a small child making these mistakes. And I'm supposed to give love and reassurance and acceptance to myself. It's like, what the fuck is this? 
And that shit's tough to do. One, because you look like a creep talking to someone that's not there. You look like a real creep when you're bent over. Okay, little boy, it's okay. And they're like, oh, we about to have a fucking Jeffrey Epstein trial situation here? What, what is going on? Some way, you got to find the love for yourself, just like I got to find the love for me, in spite of your past mistakes. Alex Jeffrey, someone I consider a pretty good acquaintance, unbeknownst to me, apparently has been going through his own life revolution. Apparently life doesn't stop just when you're going through your own thing. It's like, oh, other people have their lives that they live too? Wild. I'm not putting anything out on blast. This is what he shared. You know, he left his wife at some point. He's moved into a house where I think he's just living with a, on a mattress and has found a new girlfriend and all this shit. And uh, that kind of surprised me. And then the second thing was, uh, you know, he wrote a big long post in response to it. And he was basically like, hey, I'm just being open and honest with people, uh, which I've always been with this. It's like, uh, you know, if anything, I feel like I might be too honest sometimes. People are like, whoa, 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 reel it in. You're like, I got a small dick. Be like, all right, someone take the mic away from Tim. Be like, I come too quick. Be like, okay, listen, can we just kill it at the level? You know, be like, I don't like white people. Be like, we're going to wrap it up here. We're just, can we get two Diet Cokes to go? Thank you. Thank you. Oh, you have Coke Zero? Great. He'll take that instead. No, no, I'll just get him. But one thing he said that, that resonated with me, it was just a single line. It's like, no matter what, they can't take away your skills. And that really hit me. I was like, yeah, you know what? That's true. It's like, no matter what fucking happened to me and because of me and in spite of me, you know, no matter what life throws at you, they can't take certain shit away from you. I remember being in college and be like, no matter what, I'm always going to have this college degree. No matter what, no matter what, no matter what. My skills are still there. She didn't get them into the divorce. The leprechaun over in Ireland didn't get it as part of the bullshit judgment summary that he got on us. My ex-girlfriend didn't get them, along with my lawn furniture and other crazy shit she did. Right? Nobody can take that shit from me. And if I focus on that, you get a little bit of the light in, instead of just the darkness. Sorry, a little emotional, don't have a tissue. So that's what, what I'm working on. I would say that's the last part that I'm working on in terms of the love and acceptance part. It's like I can see it, I can logically lay it out for you, I just don't have, you know, and we just be working on it, man. So I don't ever expect to go to the lovey-dovey, you know. It's all, it's all peace and love. But I do worry in a business standpoint and a personal standpoint of just not having an attractive character, meaning that I'm just not, you know, I don't know. You look at Dan Kennedy, he's an old curmudgeon. That's one thing. And that was accepted then, but I don't think it would be accepted now. And it's tough because you're like, well, no one would want to, I'm not attractive, not just in a physical sense. I've got all these flaws and this and that and this and that and this and that. It's like, what the hell would people find attractive about me? What is it that they enjoy about me, despite all of those things? I thought they were a big deal. My ex-girlfriend made them not a big deal. And I was like, wait a minute, hold on. No, I got all these trauma and baggage and mountains to climb. And she's like, yeah, I know about them, not a big deal. And I'm like, no, no, no. I don't think you know how big this mountain is, how wide it is, how difficult it is to navigate. And she's like, I got it. Also, some self-confidence comes into dating her. She's far too beautiful for me. Self-confidence like that. So maybe I am the asshole. Um, Maybe everything that happened to me because of me was justified. Maybe I deserve all of this. And maybe everything that's happened since then is punishment, is proof of that. I deserved it. That seems like a pretty miserable way to live, and yet I'm doing so. Instead of going like, man, that fucking sucked. I have learned so much from it, and I'm in so such a fundamentally different place that hopefully 
those same habits are minimized or eliminated. And when they're not, I can hopefully catch them and address them. And that it's unreasonable to expect any person to be perfect without flaws. And in fact, my hope is that sharing my many, many flaws and showing you that, you know, I'm a success in spite of those issues might help someone else out there. And if that happens, I'm good. I'm not trying to be Joe Rogan here. I'm not trying to become world renowned with this shit. It's just like I want to help people by sharing where I fucked up and let you know, hey, man, I'm on that other side of that mountain you're trying to climb. And let me tell you, you know, this right, this spot here gets real fucking hairy. Instead of being like, well, hey, walk into devil's death trap and good luck. So if I'm doing that, you know, leave me a thumbs up, leave a comment. Let me know someone is out there that I'm not just broadcasting this to my ex-wife's attorney who's writing all these notes down. Be like, mm-hmm, 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 okay. And to anyone struggling with this, I would say, again, talk to a therapist. Not better help or anything. Talk to a real fucking therapist. Go sit down. Have some uncomfortable conversations. Don't expect it to click overnight. It certainly didn't for me. Find someone that you're happy to work with instead of, I mean, that's the most important thing. Like, I love my therapist, and I think we work well together. And also understand that we're kind of like in a tornado at all times. It's been over a year since my case has been ruled on, and I still lost a night of sleep to it last week. Now, that's better than the three or four nights of sleep I would lose the year previous. So time is doing its thing. It's just a slow motherfucker. Like love and good moments just seem to be like flashes. And your fuck-ups just seem to be like never ending on an IMAX movie screen. As always, thanks for listening. Thanks for leaving a review, giving a thumbs up, sharing this with somebody. So Giannis Papas... He's released a new comedy special on YouTube, and he's like, all it costs is a share. And, you know, some people won't do that. It's like, man, you can't fucking put a bit in everyone's nose and drag them kicking and screaming. When it's right, this will get shared with people. If it does, it does. I can't, I can't, I have no control over that. All I can do is do my best. And by that, I mean to show up semi-sober, low on the CBD count, and with notes, motherfucker. Watch Californication, by the way. Great series. My favorite series. Showtime. You're welcome. Oh, don't watch it with kids, though. Wild.